And when you say rebuild the periodic table, what do you mean specifically? Well, the way the periodic table is laid out, the periodic table they have now, Let's see it, looks, it looks like a Pull box. Image of it. it looks like a straight box. Mm -hmm. But they don't show that hydrogen has the same tone as carbon. What do you mean by tone? Same tone, same key of E. Same key of E, 40.5 hertz. The next one would be like 81 hertz. You go to silicon, it will double up and would be 162 hertz. You'll go to cobalt and it'll be 324 hertz. It's take the angles of incidence or the tones that they create, you know, their color. Like you can turn color back into sound based upon it's the same wavelength. It's just twice as long or much longer. So all you have to do is keep dividing light D by two, you keep dividing light by two, and you'll ultimately get back to the audible sound of it because there was a relationship between light and color, sound and tone, matter and shape. Walter Russell's periodic table that he put together, now you will compare that to Mendeleev's periodic table, and you'll see something completely different. It's unwinding. Whoa. And you see there's a relationship that hydrogen... So you, you had figured this out at a young age? I had already seen this. This was all inside of that palace. I had access to it, and I knew the so relationship. So you saw this in dreams? I saw it as a circle. Everything was a full circle laid out, and each area was just expanding, like wrapping a rag around your hand. The first wrap, you know, it's so tight. This is how I saw it more so, but as a vortex you'll see there's a relationship between hydrogen, carbon, silicone, cobalt, rhodium. They're all bonded. They're all sit be as the middle point between two noble gases. So those things don't really exist. It's only one substance. Now, the problem is the first thing that we're able to perceive is hydrogen. That's the first visible element because before it is too dense for us to perceive it. You understand what I'm okay. saying? As you reach into the next octave, the carbon octave, and they call that the a bisexual tone because the carbon has two tones to it. It has a negative side and a positive side. The part where lithium behaves, lithium is contractive. Beryllium is contractive. Boron is contractive. But the moment you get to carbon, you balance it out. It gets to a perfect balance of plus and minus four. So it's a double tone. Nitrogen is minus three, oxygen is minus two, fluorine is minus one. Now the balance of this, all of those are mates. Fluorine and lithium naturally mate. If you have lithium bonded with any other element, the moment that fluorine is introduced, it will break all bonds violently so it can bond with fluorine. Same thing with beryllium and oxygen. That's why it's said, and what they've tried to keep from us. If you have, you want to break water into its component parts of hydrogen and oxygen, all you have to do is introduce beryllium or the sound of beryllium, and oxygen will violently break away from any other thing, even hydrogen, to bond with that beryllium.